I'm willing to rock this boat and force some change, but I need your vote. You have to want that change, too. Elect Doug Kane. The alternative is politics as usual. On November 3rd, we'll elect a Supreme Court judge who will make decisions affecting our lives for the next decade. Moses Harrison has the experience we can trust. For 16 years, he has made the tough choices a judge faces every day. Right and wrong, guilt and innocence, fairness and injustice. Moses Harrison will bring a lifetime of dedication to the Illinois Supreme Court. Moses Harrison, he's earned our trust. Paid for by Citizens for Harrison. When we think of justice, we think of children who need us, living in a safe community, and a commitment to equal justice for all. To ensure justice, we have leaders like Judge Stuart Schiffman. As a trial judge, prosecutor, and judicial instructor, Judge Schiffman has dedicated his career to the highest ethical standards and has been an active member of our community for 20 years. A fair, thoughtful, and experienced judge. A judge our community can be proud of. Stuart Schiffman. This is WICS TV 20, Springfield Decatur. And now, live, this is 20 News Nightside, with closed captioning for the hearing impaired. Good evening. A disastrous blow tonight to the economy of Taylorville, Kincaid, and Pawnee. The Peabody Mine is laying off 384 miners through the end of the year. The mine is shutting down for two months because its chief customer, Commonwealth Edison's Kincaid Power Plant, is overstocked with coal. The layoffs come two weeks after the union approved work concessions. Peabody said it needed the concessions in order to cut coal costs to ComEd. Peabody said if it got the concessions, the mine would stay open after the end of the year. Union officials tonight said the company told them that the temporary closing has nothing to do with the new union agreement. Company officials could not be reached for comment tonight. Now, on to politics. Early this morning, it looked like frontrunner Bill Clinton would bring his campaign to Springfield this weekend. But tonight, that visit is all but canceled. The reason? Clinton's losing his grip on a big lead over President Bush in Michigan. Early this morning, Sangamon County Democratic Chair Bill Houlihan said the Clinton-Gore campaign told him Springfield had a 50-50 chance of a Clinton visit this Saturday. But polls released today showed Clinton's lead over Bush slipping in the vital state of Michigan. And the Democrat strength in Illinois appears safe. So now Clinton's headed to Michigan this weekend and not Springfield. And those polls come from a wide range of sources, and they very clearly show that Ross Perot is fading, but between George Bush and Bill Clinton, the race is tighter than ever. Steve Hendelsman has the latest now from the campaign trail. Bill Clinton! Bill Clinton is back in Michigan today because he's lost most of the lead he once had here. George Bush is breathing down his neck today in Michigan and nationwide. In last night's NBC poll, just a five-point gap between Clinton and Bush. ABC says the gap's seven. CNN said yesterday it's two. GOP polls find it's three to four points, and Democratic polls call the gap seven to eight. The numbers vary slightly, but they all indicate Clinton is in trouble. It's not just the uptick in the economy. Bush thinks his assault on Clinton's integrity is finally paying off. And yes, a difference on character. Character matters. To drive the point home, Bush is airing two new attack ads. If you're going to be president, you have to be honest. Bill Clinton says telling anything honestly to the American people. I don't think he tells the truth. I think he evades a lot of questions. The personal attacks and the fact that Bush is gaining ground on the trust issue has got Bill Clinton angry. And I think it is um, unbelievable that after the way he has misled the American people and how, how he has misled people in this campaign that he could even say the word trust. Clinton's top advisors would rather see him talk about the economy, but George Bush is ready to wrestle. Well, come on in. Let's take it on on character and trust. Ross Perot? He's big today, very big in Hollywood, but still stuck in the polls. Just last week, Democrats thought Ross Perot might hurt Bush enough in Texas and elsewhere to give Clinton some Bush states. They were talking a blowout. Now they're talking about a squeaker. At the White House, I'm Steve Handelsman for NBC News.
The major TV networks today said they will project a winner in the presidential race next Tuesday, even if the polls haven't closed in all the states. That's been a major sore point for the people in western states. Some say the network projections NBC can News discourage late western voters from bothering to go to the polls, and that can affect local races. Some local TV stations in the west say they'll drop network coverage until the polls close if the networks won't hold off. I don't think it's too much to ask that the networks show that hour of voluntary restraint. But network officials disagree. Our role is, if you know something, you tell it. And I can't conceive that there's somebody who says, don't tell me. Somebody says, don't tell me who's been elected president. I don't want to know. A number of studies have shown no negative impact from projections in the presidential races. Voters in Singamon County get to elect their county board members, but the chairman, the person who heads the board, doesn't answer directly to the voters. He's elected by the board itself. This Tuesday, that could change. As we continue our political profiles tonight, Paul Donahue explains what's behind the referendum you'll see on your ballot next Tuesday. The voters who elect Sangamon County board members have no vote in the election of a county board chairman. The majority party elects that person, and for six years, Republican Pat Noonan has held the title. I don't have a veto power. I have to get a majority, or I have to oversee the majority, voting on every issue, and I have no ability to veto that. It seems to me that giving veto power to a person elected at large takes away from the real town hall, grassroots approach of county government. 29 districts elect 29 people. They elect a chairman, but the board still rules and makes the regulation. We want change in government. Democrat George Brown disagrees. The mayor of Auburn gathered enough petition signatures to place this question on next Tuesday's ballot. It asks voters to adopt a county executive form of government and reject home rule powers. Brown says the issue is one of accountability. I believe the uh, existing system with the county board chairman elected first by his uh, county board district and then by the county board members that it does not provide the representation to all of uh, Saginaw County. Brown compares the county executive system to the city of Springfield and its mayor aldermanic form of government where a chief executive is elected directly by the voters. It works quite well obviously in the United States of America because we're in the process right now of electing a chief executive. Noonan says such a system would add another layer of government to the county and increase costs to the taxpayer. You cannot have a full-time executive and, and a staff and then a, a budget director and an attorney to, uh, to serve without having some additional costs, which are substantial. Noonan's Republican Party could also lose power since its overwhelming representation on the county board has virtually guaranteed to those members a Republican chairman. Democrats acknowledge an interest in reducing Republican dominance but say good government, not politics, guides the county executive question. Paul Donahue, 20 News Nightside, Springfield. If voters select the county executive form of government, the first election would take place in 1994. The nation's leading automaker, General Motors, today announced that it lost a bundle in the third quarter. GM reported a loss of $752 million in the three months ending September 30th. But that's better than the same quarter last year when GM lost more than a billion dollars. At the same time it announced its losses today, GM said its share of the U.S. new vehicle market is shrinking. It's now down to 33 percent. The federal government today gave approval to a new birth control drug. It's called Depo-Provera. The drug is highly effective in preventing pregnancy in women who get injections every three months. The FDA's approval comes 14 years after the manufacturer, Upjohn, first requested it. Family planning groups welcome the addition of Depo-Provera. They say women's choices are too limited. They can do something four times a year that will give them a full year's worth of protection against pregnancy. In the meantime, they don't have to do anything else. But the drug does have side effects, including weight gain, menstrual irregularities, osteoporosis, abdominal pain and fatigue, and some animal and human studies have suggested that it can increase the risk of breast cancer. Governor Jim Edgar suggests politics may have had a part in the Attorney General's opinion citing spending violations at the Illinois State Fair. But Auditor General Bill Holland agrees with the opinion, and TV20's political reporter Mark Randall has more. At issue are contracts for the Beach Boys and Clint Black at this year's State Fair. Attorney General Roland Burris issued a legal opinion late yesterday calling the contracts for the Grandstand Entertainment in violation of state spending laws. But Governor Jim Edgar is suspicious of the opinion. We're somewhat uh, 
surprised by their interpretations, particularly since it's one when he was controller, he, he approved a similar procedure. So I don't know. It's close to the election. Maybe that had something to do with it. But Auditor General Bill Holland totally agrees with the Attorney General's ruling that the Agriculture Department overstepped its bounds in stretching its appropriated dollars through unauthorized contracts. His concern is that if it's allowed to continue, any agency that has the authority to collect money for any reason could do the same circumventing the appropriation process from legislators at the state capitol and stretching appropriated dollars into dollars that the state simply doesn't have in the budget. As a practical uh, matter, if everybody was allowed to do it, we wouldn't have any idea what the budget was. It, it could set a precedent where you have a lot of agencies doing that, and I, don't, I think that circumvents the public policy as, uh, as enacted by the General Assembly. Holland does not believe there are likely to be any criminal charges connected with the violations. Mark Randall, 20 News, Nightside, Springfield. Governor Edgar's legal counsel expects to have an official response to the Attorney General's opinion by tomorrow. Grandstand entertainment at the State Fair is handled primarily through Governor Edgar's Super Cabinet member, George Fleishley. State Fair Manager Bud Hall has little to do with that part of the fair. Yes? Rain showers across the region tonight. Don, the local radar picture will show us a lot of light to moderate rain moving eastward at about 30 miles per hour. Tomorrow we can expect more rain and a high of 52. More of the forecast coming up later. All right. They finished it five years ahead of schedule and not a minute too soon for commuters. 121 is finally open. And in one central Illinois town, today was a special kind of harvest, a harvest of friendship. That story coming up. If you're looking to buy a fine quality sofa that combines exceptional style with the latest in comfort, the Lazy Boy Showcase Shop has the perfect sofa for you. Inclining sofas, reclining sofas, sleep sofas, stylish sofas to give your room country charm, traditional elegance, or contemporary comfort. Come in and see our huge selection of all kinds of sofas, all sale priced. Sofas priced from $4.49 and reclining sofas from $6.99. Pick the perfect sofa, pick the perfect fabric, pick the perfect price at the perfect sofa store. Your Lazy Boy Showcase Shop. Everything new. For 95 years, Oldsmobile has been building great road cars. Now your Heartland men of Olds dealers present Olds Value 93 style. Achieva, 207 a month for the car that took on Accord and Camry and won, hands down, in a 100,000 mile road test. Everything new. 228 a month for Sierra, JD Power's best initial quality and price class. Celebrate 95 years at your Heartland men of Olds. Oldsmobile. Everything new. He was smart, he was fast, and he knew what to aim for. At high noon, he made his move. He went to Best Buy to round up 0% financing for one year on home and car stereos, TVs, VCRs, and camcorders. With 0% for one year at Best Buy this week, you just can't miss. Promotion is an important part of any business, and it looks as though Springfield's Convention and Visitors Bureau is doing it right. The city received the Governor's Award for Excellence in the Promotion of Tourism. The award is the top honor at a statewide competition held in Springfield this week. We have a lot of terrific tourist attractions, and one of the ways we let people know that is through our advertising and promotions, and they like to pick the best, and this year we were the best. In addition to the Governor's Award, Springfield earned ribbons in five other categories. That's more awards than any other city. Springfield hosts more than one and a half million visitors each year. Illinois is adding a new interstate to its highway system. This was the grand opening day of Interstate 155, formerly known as Route 121. The 31 miles connect Lincoln to Morton, and it is a well-traveled route for commuters. The new highway uses or has four lanes, and it uses much of the existing route. The project cost $120 million, and it finished nearly five years ahead of schedule. There's a poignant story coming out of the Cantrell today of neighbor helping neighbor. TV20's Dave Heller met a group of farmers who offered their help when it was needed most. This is a harvest of friendship. Friends helping a friend in need. They're helping Lauren Brown. He planted this crop last spring, but he hasn't been able to harvest it because he's been at the bedside of his dying wife. This morning, she died of cancer.
Brown's neighbors have turned out here with an army of farm equipment. A half dozen combines crawl across the cornfields, stripping the stalks of their ears and racing against the weather. The gray skies overhead are threatening to wash out this effort. They have 200 acres of corn to harvest here. Even with six combines running at once, the job will take most of the day. Farmer Jack Ethel says he's helping because he can. Farmers do that. It's, it's standard procedure, typical. Glad that we can help out. I'm just very grateful to live in a neighborhood where they will help one in time of need. It's a truth Gary has learned from his mother's bout with cancer and one that he'll soon pass to his son and a new generation. Dave Heller, 20 News Nightside, near Cantrell. State police contributed to the effort, too. They closed Route 29 between Capitol Airport and Andrew Road for a short time so the farmers could drive their combines on the road to the last hill. And Gus Gordon is standing by to bring us up to date on the very latest weather information around here and all across the nation. As Looks as like there's a little bit of rain in the forecast. Yeah. You'll have that in a moment. It's opening night for the Springfield High School soccer sectional. I'm Paul Wappel. We'll have highlights later in sports. It's the Midwest's largest piano sale this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You'll find hundreds of name brand pianos at unheard of low prices. It's so big, the Illinois building at the state fairgrounds has been rented to house the event. Over 200 new, used, and reconditioned pianos are available. On-the-spot credit approval, as well as factory direct financing are also available. Remember, this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at the Illinois State Fairgrounds. The Olive Garden's new Roman pasta holiday celebration will have everyone speaking fluent Italian. <laughs> See for yourself when you taste our generous portions of ravioli and tonello. Chicken and artichoke mostacioli. Spaghetti carbonara. And our emperor-sized Roman holiday platter. So come celebrate our Roman pasta holiday, where for just a few lira, you too can learn to speak a little Italian. At West Town Ford in Jacksonville, we are your factory-authorized Ford truck headquarters with the best-built, best-selling truck in America. Whether for work or for play, our inventory of over 70 trucks will allow you to choose the truck that's just right for your lifestyle. F-150s, F-250s, 4x4s, super cabs, and much, much more. Come to West Town Ford and see for yourself why Ford, Ford trucks are number one. Quality people and quality products at West Town Ford in Jacksonville. Hello, I'm Mark with the Springfield Mortgage Company. Has the bank or credit union turned you down? Are the credit cards getting out of hand? Are you currently financed at a finance company paying a very high rate of interest? Even if you've had a credit problem in the past, if you own your own home, Springfield Mortgage Company can help you with your problems. That's 522-2201 or come visit us at the Vinegar Hills Mall. Tonight's TV 20 weather is brought to you by Stalls Furniture in Mount Pulaski. And we have a few more pumpkins in our contest tonight. The last five okay. for the contest. Here they are. Leona Bea brought in this pumpkin, carved it out. Beautiful job of a little baby there with a pacifier. Here's another one for you. This is a Springfield, Illinois pumpkin, complete with all kinds of other gourds and red peppers and melons. This was done by Laura Parasoto. Our next one is another carved out pumpkin. This is a graveyard scene, perfect for Halloween. Robin Fox is the artist. Here's one for you. This is from a beauty shop, the Ambassador Beauty Salon. They put together this troll, <laughs> complete with curlers and bright blue hair. And here's our final pumpkin, a farm scene. This is really elaborate, very good. Joe and Lori Framuth put this together. So I want to thank all the people who entered into the contest. Lots of beautiful work this year, a lot of creativity, a lot of hard work. We appreciate it, and we'll announce the winners tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. Don, Susan, half the staff have been in here pointing out their favorites, and we'll pick the favorites tomorrow night. Rain, 47 degrees, wind from the northeast to 10 miles per hour. Humidity at 89%, barometer holding steady and a trace of precipitation. We'll have a new rain total for you tomorrow, I'm sure. So far for October, over 6 tenths of an inch. The high today, 53. The low temperature so far, 46. 
and record extremes 83 and 17. The satellite picture tonight shows us lots of rain showers and lots of cloud cover moving up from the Gulf. There's a stationary front that's pulling up all that moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. And here's a local radar showing these showers moving eastward at 30 miles per hour. We're going to see some light to moderate rain, drizzle, some light rain throughout the rest of this evening. Here's the current map. Here's the low pressure. Here's that stationary front pulling up that moisture from the Gulf. And it's going to continue tonight, tomorrow, tomorrow night, and throughout our extended forecast, it looks like. So rain in the forecast tomorrow. Here's some allergy info. Low pollen count, moderate mold count, and the high temperatures today were in the 50s and 40s across central Illinois with 47 Columbia and Missouri, 50 at Quincy, Illinois, 53 at Decatur, 49 at Champaign. And at this hour, temperatures in the middle to upper 40s on the way down to the lower 40s across most of the area. I'll have the forecast right after this. Effective immediately, you'll never have to wait for the price to get lower. That's because Stahl's Furniture offers you the guaranteed lowest price with service every day of the year. The lowest price on Lazy Boy, Tell City, Flex Steel, and Thomasville, the biggest names in the industry. Stahl's Furniture is the only 100% gallerized store in the area with all these lines under one roof. So why wait? Shop Stahl's Furniture now. Route 54 and 121, Mount Pulaski. wasn't there for his choice for ketchup, but they won't be sorry. I'll shape up pump iron. I'll even buy tube socks. I'll be unstoppable. But where do I start? It's Nationals Pork Sale with fresh center-cut pork chops, $1.88 a pound, and fresh quarter loin pork chops, $1.48 a pound. Plus, half price on over 60 deals. Florida Gold, 99 cents. Colonial White Bread, 49 cents. All half price. Kellogg's Frosted Flakes, $1.57. National Paper Towels, 29 cents. National American Singles, 89 cents. National Apple Juice, 84 cents. All these items and more half price. Plus, Coke cases, $4.99 each. Now at National, where you can charge your purchase. If you want the best there is, you go to a specialist. Someone who knows the field, knows your needs. Now, if you're shopping for a minivan, you want the specialist at the Dodge Minivan Store. They know more Bob, about... children aged 2 to 18. Parents can't protect their children 24 hours a day, but they'd like to think that while their children are in school, they are safe. But that's not always the case, as a local mother learned. Mark Randall has that story. Last Wednesday morning, a Springfield High student was combing his hair in a school bathroom before his first class when another student reached into his coat pockets from behind. When he turned to face his schoolmate, he was beaten severely, knocked to the floor and kicked, and may have momentarily lost consciousness before help arrived. It was um, fractured on the nose, broke throughout the whole nose, and then he had a fracture under his eye, which they were concerned they might need to put a plate in, but it wasn't fractured enough. So they just repaired the nose and put a cast on it. The beaten boy's mother expects the medical bills to cost several thousand dollars. The juvenile hall called me and told me not to pay the bills, that somebody would be paying the bills. Well, I don't know who somebody is. But the money in this case is of little concern. Attempted robbery and aggravated battery charges were filed against the assailant. He's in juvenile custody. But the victim and his family face real fears for the future. I just worry about... You know, all the, all the kids, just not just mine, not just my relatives, but I just think it's ridiculous that they can't go to school and get an education and not be harassed or attacked. School officials are concerned about the fight here at Springfield High last week getting too much attention, though they say they want to prevent it from happening again. They're concerned about it sending the wrong message to what actually goes on here in school to parents. There's no doubt that our society's more violent than it's ever been, and because uh, one of the places in our society that young people come together in large numbers every day at school, obviously problems related uh, to issues of concern and safety uh, come with those kids to school. Superintendent Hill says the district as a whole recognized that trend two years ago and has worked to develop initiatives to prevent problems. We have great concern for that, and we take that part of our mission very seriously. In Springfield, Mark Randall, 20 News. And Springfield High is not the only school seeing increased violence. Just this afternoon at Southeast High, a student was assaulted. Springfield police are still investigating that incident. 
Springfield police officers are working to identify and treat the city's worst juvenile offenders. Police spokesman Jim Simarosa says Springfield is facing a national trend, juveniles committing serious crimes at younger ages. He says a new program will earmark youth who've been involved with gangs, guns, and violence and lock them up for a long time. A juvenile offender com commits four different offenses in a one-year period of time with the police, then usually that juvenile may uh, have to be sent to a juvenile detention facility uh, somewhat on a uh, uh, almost on a permanent basis. The program is scheduled to begin this spring after authorities get funding for a new computer system. A Springfield man pleaded guilty today to murder in aid of a racketeering enterprise. Artez Rogers says that he was hired to commit a murder. The mission was to kill a reputed drug dealer. Don Picken has more on the story tonight. Don? Don Rogers says a reputed drug lord gave him a gun and $2,000 to kill rival Clifton Jefferson. The alleged drug lord is Harrison King of Springfield. King reportedly had been robbed by Jefferson and wanted to protect his drug business. Artez Rogers says he too had a problem with Jefferson and agreed to shoot him. Rogers says he shot Jefferson three times in the back of the head in October of 1991. In exchange for his guilty plea, the government has dropped one count of murder against Rogers. Rogers must now cooperate with prosecutors during King's trial. King is charged with murder, drug dealing, and running an illegal business. Jury selection for King's trial began today. Opening arguments are scheduled for tomorrow. Prosecuting attorneys expect testimony from about 30 witnesses. Artez Rogers is on the witness list for the defense and the prosecution. U.S. District Judge Richard Mills could sentence Rogers to life in prison in May. Harrison King's trial is expected to last several weeks. Reporting live from the newsroom, I'm Dawn Pickin. The 100th District are once again trying to knock State Representative Mike Curran off the March primary ballot. David Dillavu and Rick Desart have now appealed their case to the Sangamon County Courts. The County Electoral Board overruled an earlier bid to have Curran removed from the ballot. The board ruled last month Curran is a resident of the 100th District and eligible to run in the March primary. Dillavu and Desart say Curran does not live in the 100th District but merely maintains an apartment there. Some figure skaters in Springfield say that Tanya Harding doesn't belong on the Olympic team. Today, Harding's husband pleaded guilty to masterminding the attack on Nancy Kerrigan last month, and he says ex-wife Tanya helped plan the assault. Young skaters say the incident has tarnished their sport. Paul Donahue reports. Here we go. Watch who we believe you. Obviously, we're having some trouble getting Paul Donahue's report, and we apologize for that mistake. But as of yet, Tanya Harding has not been charged in the attack on Nancy Kerrigan, and she still remains a member of the U.S. Olympic figure skating team. The cable television industry will soon implement a rating system for programs more suitable for mature viewers. Cable industry executives believe the labeling will give parents more control over what their children watch. Dimension Cable here in Springfield plans on participating in the program, although specifics of the plan are not yet available. Well, a shot in the arm may be all it takes to avoid getting the chicken pox. A new vaccine could keep your child from getting a common childhood virus. I'm Julie Austin. Coming up, we'll tell you more about it. Another member of the Bulls has made the All-Star team. I'm Paul Wappel. I'll have that story later in sports. You're watching 20 News with Don Hickman, Susan Finzen, Paul Wappel with sports, and Gus Gordon with the latest weather. This is the 6 o'clock report. We're here every day in your town, working hard to bring you a variety of great food and honest values, like the $1.89 All-American meal, and extra value meals as low as $2.99. And for a limited time, get the great taste of our Burger of the Month. For February, it's the Cheese Lover's Quarter Pounder. With one slice of Swiss and two slices of sharp American cheddar, it's a Cheese Lover's Dream. Hometown values is what McDonald's is all about. That's why we value Illinois. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. Save now on a new Armstrong ceiling from Menards. You'll get the style, good looks, and easy care that Armstrong ceilings are famous for. Two-by-four-foot textured panels are just $1.69. 
Beautify your bath with Design House Tub Surrounds. They're easy to install and easy to clean. This trio tub surround is available in white or bone. Just $29.88. Menards has your home improvement needs covered. Save big money at Menards. On Sunday, February 13th, NBC will present a provocative look at the future of television. A world premiere movie that asks the question, how far is too far? Decide for yourself. Where does justice end? And ratings begin. Witness to the execution. Sunday, February 13th on NBC. Jensen Home Furnishings in Taylorville invites you to surround yourself and your guests in grand style with Kincaid Solid Oak Cherry and Pine Furniture. From simplistic shaker style to enduring solid oak and the distinctive look of solid cherry, when considering quality, think solid wood construction by Kincaid and the area's lowest prices by Jensen's. Where the saving never ends, Jensen Home Furnishings, downtown Taylorville. Chicken pox, chances are you've had them. They itch, they blister, and they are very contagious. Nine out of ten people get them as children. But the next generation of children may not have to suffer. Julie Austin has the story. <coughs> there is probably nothing as common as chicken pox in children. It starts with a high fever, then a runny nose, and finally the red spots and fragile blisters. Fairly harmless, but highly contagious, and a miserable time for both you and your child. Oh, honey, should I put some stuff on me? It's such a common infection, so children are sick for anywhere from five to seven days. For many of us, chicken pox was no more than a childhood inconvenience, but it comes with complications. Complications serious enough to hospitalize thousands of children every year, and in some cases, kill. About 50 children die every year from chickenpox complications. One such case was reported here just last year. Last year we had a child who got such bad infection due to strep on top of chickenpox that we lost her. And that's why Dr. Shawdery backs a chickenpox vaccine, a one-time shot combined with the measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine given to children at 15 months. And another real advantage to using the vaccine is the savings. The typical shot will cost $35. To immunize the nation's children would cost $162 million. But Dr. Chaudhary says prevention is always better than cure, and in most cases, it's cheaper. Not only the child has to miss school, the parents also have to miss work. So economically, it becomes a big thing. The vaccine is not yet available in the United States, but after 10 years of talking and testing, approval is expected soon. So someday, like the German measles, chickenpox may be a thing of the past. In Springfield, Julie Austin, 20 News. Dr. Chaudhary says adults who get chickenpox can also have serious complications, most more serious than if they had gotten the virus as children. He says the vaccine may also prove useful in adults who have never had chickenpox. Blood banks across the country are facing a donor shortage, but that's not the case here in Springfield. The Central Illinois Community Blood Bank maintains a steady supply of blood in spite of a nationwide shortage. Last year, 8,500 people donated 24,000 units of blood. The blood bank keeps its supply by recruiting donors who have the blood type needed by most area hospitals. As they use that blood, they call us and say, We've, we need to replenish so many O positive units, so many O negative units, and so forth. And then we call our donors to come in and donate. So we don't have a shortage of blood because we keep calling until we get everything that the hospitals are asking us to provide. And many of the bank's donors give about three times a year and some give as much as five to ten gallons of blood. For some senior citizens, using a computer can be a frightening experience. But the American Association of Retired Persons is trying to help seniors overcome those fears. The AARP has set up a computer training program to keep elderly people in the workforce. We um, use our computer here to get people used to the idea of touching a, a computer so they're not scared of it. Everything is computerized today. Children getting educated in school are using computers. I don't know why people are so afraid of them. They ain't gonna hit you. 
Many companies go through the AARP to find employees. They'll often use seniors in clerical and receptionist positions. There is no fee for seniors or for employers using the training program. We now have Paul Donahue's report on local reaction to the Tanya Harding skating scandal. Local skaters say the Olympic skaters has tarnished their sports. Figure skaters in Springfield have their own thoughts about the case piling up against Tanya Harding. I think that she shouldn't be able to go to the Olympics because she had something to do with it. Do you think she should compete? No, just because she doesn't show I any mean, sportsmanship. Harding's husband pleaded guilty to planning the attack on Nancy Kerrigan at the U.S. Figure Skating Championships in Detroit. And Jeff Galuli says Harding knew about the plot beforehand, though Harding herself denies the charge. What you saw at the U.S. Figure Skating Championships in Detroit last month is the culmination of years of practice at thousands of ice skating rinks just like this one across the country. The pressure to compete at rinks like this one begins at a young age. Well, people can steal skates or steal dresses and tear them. Or... You've heard about that even at your yeah. age? Yeah. What do, you, do you have to watch out for that kind of stuff? Yeah. Her coach says most of that is just talk, but she acknowledges greed may have motivated Kerrigan's attackers. There's always talk of don't leave your skates in the locker room, don't leave your tapes lying around, but you never really think that somebody's going to do something like that. Liz says she doesn't think one incident should tarnish the entire sport. These skaters agree saying they compete for fun, not glory. In Springfield, Paul Donahue, 20 News. And as we said earlier, as of yet, Tanya Harding has not been charged in the attack on Nancy Kerrigan, and she still remains a member of the U.S. Olympic figure skating team. Well, it's a busy night on the prep basketball scene, and Paul Waffle is in next with a preview of the Pleasant Plains Lutheran game. And the Washington Redskins are ready to name their new head coach sports after this. The closed captioning of this newscast is made possible by CIPS. We've always been one of the first to try something better. I remember Dad had the first baler in the area. Boy, did we love that. Sure made hay and simpler. It's starting a whole new era. And now there's another new era starting with this broad strike weed control system. You see, broad strike herbicide does for weed control what the baler did for hay and makes it simpler. Dad would have loved this new broad strike. These low IRS sale prices at Royal Manufactured Homes won't leave your blue eyes crying in the rain. Save hundreds, even thousands of dollars on the new manufactured or modular home of your dreams. Interest rates have never been lower, and you can use your tax refund toward your down payment. Jack Loftus and staff invite you to shop Royal Manufactured Homes. Shop Royal Manufactured Homes and get more for less. Cause you can't be the IRS. Can we shop? There's a whole lot in store on the next Can We Shop starring Joan Rivers. On Monday, make a date with folk singer Judy Collins. On Tuesday, get the latest tips from helpful hints diva Heloise. Wednesday, let's walk and roll with Chinese cuisine expert Joyce Chen. On Thursday, meet Broadway's original phantom Michael Crawford. And Friday wraps up the week when Tracy Scoggin shows us the ultimate fun workout. Don't miss the next Can We Shop starring Joan Rivers. She delivers. Weeknights at 12.35 a.m. on TV20. This TV20 sports segment is brought to you by Canopy. Good evening from the Lutheran High School Gymnasium where Pleasant Plains and Lutheran will battle it out tonight in a new Salem Conference matchup. The Crusaders are 13 and eight. The Cardinals enter this game with an 11 and nine mark. And joining me now is Pleasant Plains head coach, Paul Kastner. Paul, this is a big game for your team, isn't it? It sure is. Uh, coming off of a loss to Illini Central and then uh, getting Virginia last uh, Saturday night, I think uh, the quality of uh, Lutheran will tell us where we're at at this point. Regionals get underway at the end of the month. Is it that time of the year where you start to tune up for playoff time? Oh yeah, I think we try to make uh, try to make a lineup adjustments and see what we have there and uh, see who can fit with who. What do you have to do to stop the Crusaders? They're tough on the home floor here. Well, I, I think one thing we're going to try to pressure them and uh, handle their guards a little bit, and uh, we got to uh, stop uh, Zach a little bit, Boog that is, and. Uh, Hopefully you can contain him, and if we do that, I think we'll fare all right. All right, thanks, Paul, and good luck tonight. Okay, thank you very much. All right, also with us, Lutheran head basketball coach Jim Klug. Uh, one of the keys is stopping your son. What do you have to do to stop the Cardinals tonight? Well, we have to handle their pressure. That's obvious. Um, 
And I think one of the things we have to do is really play good defense because they're quicker than we are. We're going to have to work together on that. Talk about uh, the last few weeks for your team. You've had uh, a lot of kids out. How many kids did you have uh, uh, from one time to another? Uh, before the last game last weekend, we had seven kids for each of the last three games. It was pretty tough. Uh, we slowed things down a lot and changed a few things, but we got most of them back now. And I guess you're tuning up for regional time, too. Well, we sure hope so. All right, Jim, thanks, and good luck tonight. Thanks a lot. All right, some other basketball news. The Fighting Illini will try to knock off Penn State tomorrow night on the Nittany Lions' home floor. The Illini will have to play well because Penn State has pulled off some big upsets at home. Uh, Penn State has a veteran ball club. They have basically the same team that we played last year, and uh, uh, we know what they've done. They've beaten Minnesota. They've beaten Purdue. And uh, uh, we know exactly how good they are. It's going to take a great effort to win that ball game. NBA news, Bulls forward Horace Grant will play in the NBA All-Star game. Grant was added to the Eastern Conference team as a reserve today. B.J. Armstrong and Scottie Pippen, of course, are starters for that game. And Bulls center Scott Williams has been activated. He could play against Denver tonight. We'll have some highlights from that game at 10 o'clock. Well, Tanya Harding's ex-husband has pleaded guilty to racketeering charges in the connection with the attack on Nancy Kerrigan. Jeff Galuli says that Harding and three others were involved with the attack, which was planned in early December. Galuli will serve two years in a federal prison and pay a $100,000 fine. Tanya Harding denies allegations she knew about the plot to attack Kerrigan. Of course, love more tonight at 10. And no surprise here, the Washington Redskins are expected to name Norv Turner as their new head coach tomorrow. Turner is currently the Dallas Cowboys offensive coordinator. He'll take over a team that was 4-12 last season. Turner will replace Richie Pettibone. And of course, tonight at 10, we'll have highlights from this Lutheran Pleasant Plains basketball game and scores from across central Illinois. Back to the studio. Thank you, Paul. Well, the stock market was off a few points today. The Dow Industrials gave up 14 and a third points, closing at 39.6401. Transportations were off five and three quarters. Utilities were off one and a half. Volume came to more than 300 and 22 million shares. Closing prices on the Board of Trade, wheat was one and a half lower to one and a half higher, and corn was three quarters lower to one higher, and soybeans were off one to one and a quarter higher. At the elevators, corn a penny higher, soybeans a penny higher, and soft wheat was two to three cents lower today. Tonight's market report was brought to you by A.G. Edwards and Sons in Springfield. Now, here's Mr. Good News. More <laughs> snow on the way, huh? Well, flurries, Don. <laughs> Not a big snowstorm expected. Just some flurries across central Illinois. We'll have the full forecast for you coming up shortly. And later, some bad news for Bozo the Clown. In place after place across the Midwest, more and more soybean farmers are switching to no-till. And the pre-emergence herbicide they choose most is Canopy. The only one with burn down and season-long control. Canopy. The no-till herbicide. IGA says, hi Sprout, lovely day, isn't it? Not for packing corn. I hope the giant's prepared. Don't worry, Sprout. The Green Giant vacuum packs his special niblets corn with very little water. Healthier eating is made easy with sweet, tender niblets corn from Green Giant. Crisp and fresh and on sale, three cans for a dollar. Another perfect day for corn, Mrs. Duck. So visit your favorite IGA store today time. It can work for you or against you. It can cost you money or help your money grow. Let time be your friend. Talk to the investment brokers at A.G. Edwards today. Hi, I'm Becky Baum. I'm proud of the fact that Edwards Roots in Springfield go back to the time of Abraham Lincoln, but our ideas are as modern as today. Hello, I'm Tom Pate. We've been helping people right here in Springfield for over 50 years now. We're proud of our roots in the community. See the people at A.G. Edwards today. It's the experience, the Remax Edge. It's the experience. When you want results, it just makes sense to go with experience. Remax experience. Remax experience. Above the crowd. Hello, this is Fritz Pfister. I've helped hundreds of families like yours to sell their home. May I help you? This TV20 weather segment is brought to you by DuPont Classic, Pinnacle, Assure 2. Welcome back. The polar jet stream is well down into the United States, down into the southern tier of states. 
So we're seeing lots of cold air across the region. Overnight, we had some low temperatures, no records, but still cold all the same. Two below Springfield, seven below Champaign, two above Decatur. And we're going to see some cold air stick around with us. Probably not quite this cold for at least a few more days. Looking ahead to the entire month of February, we are in that category called below normal with temperatures. Normally, the high temperature at the beginning of the month would be 33, at the end of the month, 44. Low at the beginning of the month, 16, and low at the end of the month, 25. Our temperature should be below that in February. Here we have February rain. We're going to be in the normal category. And for us in central Illinois, that's about an inch and three quarters all said and done. So precipitation-wise, we should be on course for normal. 22 the high today, two below the low temperature. Record low you can see was 13 below, so we were quite a ways from achieving that. That was set in 1951. 22 right now, wind from the southeast at 8, wind chill of 10, and relative humidity 65%. Lots of cloud cover to speak of. It was a beautiful day, full of sunshine. Now the clouds have moved into the region. They're going to be with us for a while. And also tonight, we have the chance for seeing some snow flurries. Not a lot, but we do have that chance. Here's our radar put into motion. 24 hours worth of information, so right now not too much going on, but you can see some snow developing in Iowa, Missouri. This is all moving to the southeast and to the east, and we should see some flurries before this is all said and done this evening. Also a chance of flurries tomorrow night. Here's our weather map. We're going to put it in motion. First comes the warm front. That's going to allow temperatures tomorrow to warm up into the 30s. Then comes the cold front tomorrow night. Another chance of flurries tomorrow evening. And this is the cold front we really have to pay attention to. That's going to allow more cold air into the region. So first the warm front comes through, warms things up to about 30 degrees for high temperature tomorrow. Then the cold front moves through, and we could see below zero temperature readings again with this next cold air mass beginning tomorrow night and then on into Thursday, Friday. Here we have high temperatures for this day, 23 Decatur, 16 the high temperature at Champaign-Urbana, 14 Bloomington Normal. And at this hour, temperatures, hey, well, not too bad, all things considered, especially with such a cold start to the day. 23 Jacksonville, 22 Litchfield, 20 Taylorville, 19 Decatur, 18 at Lincoln, and 20 degrees at Petersburg. Overnight, we're looking at teens and single digits across the state, and tomorrow's high temperatures warming up into the 20s and 30s across the state of Illinois. And, of course, Groundhog Day. We'll see whether we're going to have an early spring or a late spring. Tonight, mostly cloudy, flurries, a low temperature of 13 tonight. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy with a high of 30, winds southwest 10 to 20 miles per hour. Tomorrow night, mostly cloudy, flurries, a low temperature of 3, and sunset at 520. Thursday, sunny, very cold, a high temperature only of 7 degrees. And then the five-day forecast will show us cold on Thursday, a little warmer on Friday, 24 for the high temperature. Warming up even more on Saturday with a high of 32, partly cloudy. And then on Sunday, cold again, 15 and 6, and a chance of flurries. Don, Susan? And, of course, uh, Gus will update us tonight at 10, not sure. I, I, I hope to be here, yes. <laughs> We hope you are, too. Coming up, Bozo the Clown is working weekends. We'll have the story after the break. I just put it together. It took about an hour and a half one Sunday afternoon. And it's been in constant use since. Bill Shepard is the kind of farmer who likes to figure things out for himself. We call it the country cruiser. Whether it's inventing an all-terrain farm stroller or controlling his weeds. So he goes with classic, pinnacle, and assure too. Uses one, two, or all three and designs his own post-soybean program. And it's worked out real well. Classic, pinnacle, and assure too. What makes them better is you. At Burger King, two plus two equals 199. <laughs> Love this place! It's the new Burger King Everyday Value Menu with many of your favorite Burger King foods at new lower everyday prices. And now two flame broiled burgers and two orders of golden fries for $1.99. They look delicious. Check your Burger King for their everyday low prices. And now for a limited time, two great tasting flame broiled burgers and two small fries for $1.99. Value every day. Have it your way. I love this place! When you think of quality, think of the number one selling car in America for the second year in a row. Ford Taurus. Think of standard dual airbags, available anti-lock brakes, and free 24-hour roadside assistance. And think about value. Now you can save over $1,100 on a new Ford Taurus loaded with all these features and more. So when you think of quality, think of Ford Taurus. Then see your local Ford dealer today, where quality breeds success. A 
34-year tradition in Chicago is coming to an end. Bozo the Clown is going from five days a week to just one show on the weekend. The decision was made because WGN is starting a weekday news program. Children across the nation watch Bozo. In fact, he's so popular that studio tickets are sold out through 1995. Coming up on our Nightside Report, Springfield City Aldermen are expected to debate an ordinance tonight that would regulate cable TV rates. Also ahead, if you are a senior citizen and need some tax tips, we'll show you where you can go to get some help. Find out how some area parents are working together to help each other control their children. Plus, the bug is back. We'll show you what's new for the remake of the VW Beetle. Nightside. Join us then. In the meantime, thank you and have a pleasant evening. We'll look for you at 10. The closed captioning of this newscast is made possible by CIPS. Listen. What's that? Listen. Sounds good. Listen to the sounds of a whole other road. Apple cinnamon Cheerios. Wait till you taste real apples and grated cinnamon together with the whole grain goodness of Cheerios. It's why every O tastes as good as it sounds. Hey. Listen to the sounds of a whole other O. Apple cinnamon Cheerios. Listen. It's the WMAY WICS Greater Springfield Garage Sale. Garage Sale? There's everything you'd ever want with bargains by the ton. There's lots to see and lots to do and lots and lots of fun. Looking for that unique item? Don't travel all over town. It's at the convention center Saturday and Sunday. Save cash on discount tickets at participating Amico service stations. It's the WMAY WICS Greater Springfield Garage Sale. So come on down and join the fun. There's something here for everyone at our garage sale. America's Game, a show the whole family can enjoy, filled with fun, glamour, excitement, surprises, Wheel of Fortune. And now the stars of the show, Pat Sinjak and Van Away. Hey, Johnny. Thank you very much. See you later. It is a Wheel of Fortune time again. Glad you could be with us. We want to meet our players and get right on with our game. Hi, John. Good. Evening. This is John Mead from Ocean Grove, New Jersey. Want to hear all about you? Uh, I know you have a big family and a lot going on in your life, so let's hear it.